So today we are reading Shishirada Rasa Sudanidi, verse 102. Shirada's glances show wonderful expertise in dancing. <laughs> Please the mind of King Cupid, who sits on his royal golden throne. Nice. Oh, yes, I start again. Shirada's glances. <laughs> Shiradical's glances show wonderful expertise in dancing. <laughs> to please the mind of King Cupid, who sits on his royal golden throne, her buttocks. She hangs a golden curtain of bashfulness, shyness, over the dancing stage of her young body, where she scattered handfuls of flowers in the form of her smile and where she uses her youthful charms as an introduction to Cupid's play. Shiradika's glances show wonderful expertise in dancing to please the mind of King Cupid who sits on his royal golden throne, her buttocks. She hangs a golden curtain of bashfulness over the dancing stage of her young body, where she scattered handfuls of flowers in the form of her smile and where she uses her youthful charms as an introduction to Cupid's play. Brother, we can just stop here on these words because Prabhupada Saraswati is giving as the subject for meditation. And this is his beloved Ishtadev, Radhika. No. My. Okay. Yes, Gurudev. So Prabhupada Saraswati is giving in these words very nice subject for meditation. And his subject is Radhika, beloved Ishtadev of him. And he is giving instructions how to meditate on Radharani. 
and who can deeply meditate on her in such a sublime details. Only her dasi. Or is someone who is fixed in Staibav, who is very close to Radharani, can meditate slowly and deeply only someone who is in his fixed bath in stai bath like radharani's dasi maid servant can meditate on this radhika's very nice very beautiful ornaments of her qualities and he can meditate slowly and deeply and in the words actually we can see that just in one words Prabhupada Saraswati is mentioning so many beautiful qualities which are very specific for Radharani her glances and the dancing of her glances. And this dance of her glances are intoxicated the mind of embodiment of Cupid, who is doing what? He is sitting on the golden throne. always meditating in his heart and, he, and is his mind that he is sitting, that he is taking the rest of this golden throne of Radhika's beautiful, broad uh, buttocks. Then, Prabhupada Saraswati continues and said that Radhika has a golden curtain of shyness. On dancing stage of her young body. He wants to say and to stimulate us sadhakas to meditate. and feel through his words and his visions to meditate on golden Mahabhava Swarupini. Then he's saying, then she's throwing so many sweet smiles with bashfulness, with shyness, but with so many sweet, sweet smiles. I remember there is somewhere is descriptions of different smiles. And sometimes the smile is very, very, very tiny, barely to see. Sometimes the smile is very nice, the lips are stretching, but Radhika doesn't show the teeth. And it's very silent smile. Sometimes Radhika is smiling that she's showing the teeth. And these teeth are is described as like a pearls with rubies in the middle of each pearl of her beautiful nectarian teeth. 
And then she is smiling with open mouth. And she smiles sometimes loudly. And each of these smile is depending on different lila, different situation in which Radhika is. Like a very playful Devi. Yeah. And then Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is going and said, is mentioning youthful charms which Radhika emanate from all her existence. With her bodily features, she is emanating these youthful charms. She is emanating these youthful charms through the eyes, through the smile, through the fragrance of her body, through her movements, which are so attractive and charming, especially in this age of Kishori. And this is the stage for actually Cupid, who wants to look, to enjoy, and to be controlled by the person who has all these beautiful alankaras or ornaments. So who can mention all these qualities of Radhika in details? Only someone who is so closed to Chimataratara and who is completely fixed in his bath and doesn't go in any second astray from his beautiful Bhavo Lasarati, Manjari Bhav. I'm saying this because last time also we were talking about this Thai Bhav and the importance of understanding this. And we can see here that practically in each verse and each commentary is glorification of, first of all, Manjari style. <coughs> and this is something, this kind of fixed bug is helping devotee to relish rasa relationship and each devotee has his own relationship according to his tai bhav or bhav and automatically he is seeing krishna youthful couple or radhika through this eyes of his own love, <laughs> own bow. And we can see here that Manjaris are relishing the sweetness of Yugala Kishore. They are relishing the sweetness of their forms, their uh, names, their lilas, especially their qualities. But Manjaris, although they are relish youthful couple, they are still partial to Shimataratara. And they are always fixed in her bhava, receiving her bhava or Mahabhava, we can say. And because of that, they are expert in their service of Yugalakishwar. 
So they are relishing this service which is very rarely attained. Even the Sakis cannot come in this position to serve intimately Radha and Mohan. But feeling, feeling of minus is meant for Radharani. She is mine, not he. She is mine, and I am her, not his. So when these things, when this bhava, this subject is deeply rooted naturally in the heart of devotee, then he can attain Siddhi by the mercy, exclusively by the Kripa. But hearts must be prepared for this specific Bhava. In our case, if we want, this is Manjar Bhava. And for some other devotees, they can choose whatever they want. But the point is that each devotee who has established relationship has his own stai bhava. He doesn't mix stai bhava with other stai bhavas. I hope that I, it's understandable what I'm talking, it's clear. Because Mother Yashoda, she has a stai bhava towards Krishna. She likes Radhika. She likes very much Radhika. Sometimes he said even more than Krishna. But her stai bhava, her permanent bhava, is always focused on his, her, Beloved Gopal. He wants to feed him. She wants to feed him. She wants to protect him. She wants to punish sometimes him. <laughs> She's tolerating or misbehavior of her beloved sweet son. And we can see that many, many devotees in Raja, when we are speaking of Raja, and we are always speaking about Raja, actually they have their own Stai Bhava towards Krishna. But only Manjaris, as I understood, they have their Stai Bhava towards Radhika. And this is the reason why it's Bhavo Lasa Rati. In all situations, they are on the side of Radhika. All feelings which Radhika has and appears in her heart, happiness or distress, automatically reflecting on Manjaris. So this is the beauty and very rare, unique position of Manjaris. Other devotees, even in Raj, are focused on Krishna. But in different moods, but they are focused, most, most of them are focused on Krishna. And this, there are different variations of moods, what are, uh, what are present in Braja. And according to this mood, we say bhava or stai bhava, they serve, they feel, and they see Krishna, Radha Krishna, or only Radhika. For example, older gopis, 
they see Radha and Krishna like her children. Seven, eight, ten years. Very playful, sweet children. But Sakis, and especially Manjaris, they see them like Kishore Kishori. Mad teenagers, they are mad out of love for each other. And this is the reason why so often our Acharyas are writing, uh, they are mad like uh, mad elephants. Because this is teenager <laughs> mood when they are in love. But someone who is in Vatsalaras, he doesn't see them like Kishore Kishore. He sees them, that's Lali, Gopal, two beautiful boy, uh, children's boy and sweet girl, and that's it. And sometimes it's yesterday we were talking on our <coughs> local, local creation Zoom. We were talking how Radha and Krishna are appearing like her children in Varshane sometimes. And when they are going down through the forest towards Vrindavan, they change, they age simultaneously and becoming teenagers. And this can be seen only through the eyes of Manjaris or Sakis also. And maybe you will ask why this guy took so much time to explain all these things. But somehow I really think I I'm thinking, I'm trying to feel, I'm trying to go inside of this beautiful relationship and see the, these differences so that my Staibhav be clear because all other devotees, they have clear Staibhav. You cannot change Staibhav of mother and father. You cannot change Staibhav of eternal friends. You cannot change anyone's stay above, even Devaki, <laughs> Vasudeva. They have their own stay above. And this stay above... Uh, sorry, Sundar. Right. Sundar. No, Ranga Sundar. Sai Rade, you're making me, uh, give me a nice pictures to see this difference of the sky bar and one different especially is by Manjaris is the 24 7 who is guiding our useful couple in night time there is no mother no friends there is the couple and the manjari. So this is the beauty we are trying to go in in this 24-7 meditation to see that what we just reading in this verse how Cupid sits on the golden throne and the golden throne is Radhika. And this is a picture nobody books, nobody, nobody can see but Manjari. Nobody will see this beautiful picture when Swamini shows 
He is my. He sits on her left. So this is the perfect picture to see that he is her. And this smile, what he can see is her smile when she recognizes this and shows him, My Krishna, you are mine. Now you are here. Now I can serve you. And the Manjaris, the biggest uh, joy they can get is this moment where they're preparing the whole day for that he is not on a on another kunja or somewhere else. Now he is on her golden throne. And they are together now. And then the ocean starts, comes in the contact of this Bhava, of the Mahabhava, and starts to move. And this is also described in this verse that. He is in the beginning, and she, with her smile, instruction, what is the next step? <laughs> <laughs> then uh, after some time, the tsunami will come, in many ways. You remember me now that there is one word, beautiful words, which you said now in Vilapa Kusumanjali, who is explaining Radhika like Kalavati. She's the ocean of all loving arts. But Krishna is Kalanidhi also ocean of arts and she he is always swaying because the winds of radhika heart is giving such a huge waves <clears throat> on his ocean so this kalavati and kalanidhi are actually Kama Gayatri. <laughs> In different situations. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> Say something, Gurudev. So much. That's how it's coming. Then all of us seek our service. Yes.
in final stage, I see different. If I am in first stage, second stage, the vision becomes that way to see. But this is okay that we will start, start to step. And one day, step by step, mercy will come to grow. So it's all mercy, my dear. All of your grace, sitting and sharing, listening, it increases our level. Rather, thank you. I also want to increase my level. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm very proud. When you share your feelings. Yeah, I see that. The commentary name is Sri Radhika's Artfully Dancing Glances. Both during visions and after them, Sri Pada relishes a succession of Radha's flavors. Shri Pada is the manifest form of Sriman Mahaprabhu's grace. By doing bhajan himself, he is teaching the world expertise in bhajan. Mahaprabhu has given them the responsibility to teach bhajan to the world. Srimad Sanatana Goswami was very morose, so he wanted to commit suicide by throwing himself before the wheels of Lord Jagannatha's chariot. But Mahaprabhu told him, Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Lila Chapter 4. Tomara Sharira Amara Pradhana Sadhan. Your body is my main means through which I have many things to accomplish. Through your body, I wish to preach the principles of the devotee. Devotion itself, as well as love for Krishna, and the duties and conduct of a Vaishnava. Now you wish to give up that body. How can I tolerate this? Thus, we must learn expertise in bhajan from them. Rasamayi, please can you repeat the words? Huh. Your body is my main means through which I have many things to accomplish. Can we stop, please? We can see here from this sentence, your body 
is my means, my instrument. instrument. Not your instrument. Your body is my instrument. Through which I want many things to accomplish. I want to accomplish. Not you. You have to be instrument in my heart, in my hands, sorry, because I have desire and idea which I want to accomplish. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is talking to Sanatan Goswami. What he wants to say in this sentence. You are mine, yes. You are mine instrument. And you have to completely surrender and accept this position to be just my instrument. Because I have a plan for you. I want to accomplish something very valuable. And then he's starting to speak what is his plan and what he wants to accomplish through his instrument in the form of Sanatana Goswami. Still Goswami. Please. Uh, in, in this connection, you inspire me to share <clears throat> what was actually the main topic here in the last days. Uh, it's all about Saiba and the real understanding of Saiba. So before I thought, you fix completely on the Rani, that's Saiba. But actually, now I understood through Gurudev's mercy that this is very unspecific. It's still very unspecific. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling also, if you want to serve me in style, that means you're just fixed on my wishes or needs, not on yours. So we may talk about Radharani. We may have very nice um, sharings. We may even write books or do so many things in the name of Radha and connect it. And even we can use the scriptures to prove what we are telling. But if there is a subtle, very subtle, wish in the heart that I actually want to be a pundit or I want to have any self-interest in this connection, we are out. Then we are in Sanjari Bhakti, not stuck. So in my, my understanding from these days, it's very, very important that we see if we do something, it's not just to do it for Radharani, it has to be for her complete satisfaction. And if that means that I cannot talk in an audience 
about Radha, then I cannot talk about Radha. Then I have to talk about love or something else because the audience is not ready. But I would enjoy to talk about Radha. So it's very, very subtle. I just wanted to, to open this. I'm sure that devotees here, they have also some feelings and some points to share on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying Sanatana Goswami, your body is mine. Your body, mind, intelligence, whatever is Sharira is mine. And you have to accept it. Because I have, I have planned to accomplish. And Sanatana Goswami, with his body, was serving and showing that through the body, Seva Sada Karupena, he was writing so many books, sometimes not specifically writing about Radharani, talking about rather, but in his Sida Swarup, he was relishing his Thai Bhav or Manjari Bhav. Because he wanted to be perfect instrument, even in the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Sharanagati is complete. And his Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the next sentence is continuing what he wants to do through his body. Please Rasamir. Next sentence. Yes, please. That quickly. Sorry, I, I just felt when you were explaining more and also Gauravani's nice sharing that is the principle of die to live. Die to live. You hear me? We know yes. this from our teachers and achayas. And I thought, yeah. Like Guru often say that uh, to be clean in our in my heart for this pure purity of charanagati and surrender that the ego has to die and uh, that is our process that we are going through individually to become alive in our sarup and that is also the fine tuning of being fixed in the feelings of a, of a real Dasi who has died to live. Or being in the floating moods of trying to find the fixed service attitude. And that is, uh, I thought this was something practical. Okay. <laughs> I like also to add something to that one. You can hear me? Just To fix to fix ourselves. This you said not only uh that means what is our fixed point? This is the Manjari path. This is what we have to get. To come in the feeling of the Manjari. To study everything about the Manjari. 
to become manjari, to behave like manjari, to think like manjari, to see like manjari. Everything to do like manjari they'll do. And for this, these books are so important. And we get the mantras, Diksha mantras, by our Gurudev to go in contact to these manjaris to create, to, to grow our feelings as manjari. This is the meaning of manjari bar. What is a manjari? How to become manjari? How to live the life of manjari? Even we can do in this body by 24 7 think about what happened now with Radha and Krishna. How to start now? Just daytime, it's around six o'clock. What is now going on? And then nighttime comes. This is Manjari Bar to go 100% in this. Yeah, some technical topics. So, Muravani, that is, I like very much what you said also to this point. What is our meditation point, our main point? And really to, to come on this stage of a manjari, that is the goal we have to get to find. And Mahaprabhu is giving everything to his disciples. Give the bar of Manjari to his followers. And how we can give this? Because he is she. It's our Swamini who is giving this. Yeah. In the heart. So they can give it to their disciples and their disciples and their disciples to Guru Dev. And he can put it in our heart so that we become das and das and das. That is what Guru Dev today gave to us. We have to serve all others. We are the most junior, the smallest of all. Like, not like baby, but short after this. That's a king Billy. It's more than king Billy, said Kirby. Yes. I was so, I got inspiration from all of you, especially Gora Bani. I remember once Gora Govinda Swami Maharaj told us, we are doing Harikata is not to for, for me, for us. For the pleasure of Radha and Moha and Guru Gora. So we are hearing this Harikata, Radha Rasa Sdhanidhi. It's not to for my pleasure or our pleasure. Then I start thinking, oh, what do you mean? My understanding, we we hear this Radharasa Stani di Virapax Manjari as my Swarupavesh. And then try to try to Meditate, try to serve this this harikata and try to enter more deep in this harikata. So sometimes our ego may appear at any moment. Oh, I'm doing. Oh, I'm enjoying the kind of tendency. So Guru Devas is suggesting us. So we are twenty four seven. We we try to be Manjari Swarupa. 
and try to motivate the star. So what uh, Sundara Prabhu also say, we are very humble, humble servant. So we are not to dance your brother. We are dancing. That is the servant of servant of servant. So just to I remember this. This is Gurudev actually saying. So we are not to Radha Dashi. We are trying to be Radha Dashi, the servant of servant of servant. So that's an dancing person. That, that. And all devotees. Bhajan is not for our satisfaction. Sometimes we can think I am happy by doing bhajan. And sometimes we can say this is Radhika's happiness, which is and Gurudev's happiness, which is reflecting in my heart. But what will happen when distress is coming? Should I say, is this distress of my Gurudev, which is reflecting? Is this distress of my Swamini, who is, who is suffering and crying because she cannot go in the Kunja? So this is this happiness and this stress through the bhajan can help devotee to understand that he is not doing bhajan for his happiness, own happiness. Yesterday we were talking about that also. It's very nice connection between yesterday and today, Zoom, on our local creation Sangha, how these things are important, that bhajan has to be done for the satisfaction or Radhika or Yuga Lakishore. And the happiness which we feel, but also we have to feel, if we are really deeply in the bhajan, we will feel also distress. Sadness of our Swamini. And it is possible only when we are deeply situated in our Stai Bhav. Thank you. Rasami. Some difficulties come with our soap of the test. How is my style? Today, same thing is coming when I'm the same myself. Why difficulty? I'm so confident. You not see that is I'm Kukala. That is I'm Kukala is the desire of them that they are doing their pastime. <laughs> But there is no diversion there in song. How she ignore the talk of some Ketila and put her? That she is not this. 
We have to be very much learn these things. They are our works for teaching and guiding when the difficult circumstances come. Is like to be in life. Some is teaching. They are living in my home. In form of my sister in law and mother in law. My dear. <laughs> but the very intense love is not watching that. With was of her. One pointedness is there. So it's all bliss. And it comes like the waves to feel it and live in that. Your body is my main means through which I have many things to accomplish. Through your body, I wish to preach the principles of the devotee. Devotion itself as well as love for Krishna and the duties and conduct of a Vaishnava. Here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that through you and others, through your body, I want to establish Sambhada, Abhideya, and Prayojan. And he is saying, Bhakta Bhakti Krishna Prema, Tatvera Nirdara. Bhakta, I want to establish who is Bhakta? What is Bhakti? And what is the goal of life? Krishna Prema. In one very short sentence, <coughs> Mahaprabhu explaining his heart's desire, which he wants to accomplish for the benefit of this world, not for his own benefit, for the benefit of this world. I want to establish who is Bhakta. Not Jnani, not Yogi, not Karmi, not any Mishra. Bhakta is someone who has established himself in his Thai Bhava towards Ishtadev. This is devotee. This is Bhakta. And what he is doing? He is doing bhakti. <coughs> Abhideya. He is serving with full love. Yeah. And finally, to attain final, ultimate, uh, final goal, not sorry, ultimate, final goal, prema. So through your body, I want to spread importance of Sambhada, Abhide, Prayojana. And through your body, I want to define what is, who is Bhakta, 
what is bhakti, his activity, and what is the goal of all human beings. Pure, pure frame. So you don't have a right and you cannot kill yourself. This is very selfish desire. Poi me lo rigiri in italiano, Baba. This, this question. Italiano. <laughs> this question maybe also not this abstract about the body. This question who is the body? Who is your body also coming? Not only Guranga is not only asking his direct companion, this question may also come in our life that we have to give up this selfish idea of my body, right? <laughs> And I think every devotee has to think about this question of Mahaprabhu. How to, how to come to this point of a servant. That how, how big is the part? I like to be the controller of mind and body. And how much I give up this idea and I I do what I do but in which um or is it a selfish idea or is it in the service move? So maybe we can also add this what Mahaprabhu said in our own life and to become like Suniti said, that, uh, like a second bird. But when he take over, we have to apply this instruction in our life. Otherwise, Sambada will never be finished. What to speak about about Abhidei and Prayaj. And this is what you are always talking in Gurudev 24-7. Only who is who is situated in his Sambad can do 24-7. But we have to follow these kind of examples. And this is our Sadhana. And this is the reason why we are reading, nourishing each other, why we are nourish ourselves, because Acharya is giving us food in the form of their words directly in our ears, in our heart, so that we can digest their words are actually food only food for our real existence food for soul and step by step slowly but surely and progressively <laughs> one day we will be able to receive full mercy. <coughs> this is, I just wanted to add. So we can see here how in one words or one sentence is so many deep layers. And if someone is really eager he doesn't have to study this. It will come up 
immediately. When he sees this sentence, immediately will come to the, his heart, in his mind, and through his mouth, by the mercy. He doesn't have to study by the heart. I know which words, number this and that. No. Everything will be clear when someone say, Bhakta, Bhakti, Krishna, Prema. It's not philosophy. Relationship, what to do, activity in this relationship, and final goal in that relationship is not philosophy. <laughs> and this is the reason why Gurudev is a lot of time is mentioning the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is always repeating, even the foolish child can understand what is my relationship, what I have to do, and what is my goal. Doesn't have to be so intelligent, so knowledgeable, literate, foolish child. But how to understand, how to receive this Kripa with open heart? Yeah. Patra, <laughs> like we said. This is our Patra. In to receive something and one is to dance different directions. I cannot receive. That's the part. Right? Yeah. I am ready to receive and one is to turn down. I don't want to receive it. Yeah. Understand? I'm ready to receive and I'm not accepting. I turn my partner different direction. It's like a closed heart. This one. <coughs> like this one. So this is we can receive the water. But if we have ego, then we, we do like this. So we cannot receive anything. So we have to surrender and we have to do this. Then we can receive. This is good to be saying. <coughs> right. Yes. Go on. <coughs> Yes. Thus, we must learn expertise in bhajan from them. In meditation, one must see how Sripada, in his King Karirupa, relishes. Shirada's sweetness along with the flavors of his beloved's service. They are extraordinary kinkaris that never come down from the asana of a kinkari. Lalita, Vishaka, and others occasionally act as heroines. But the Kinkari's hearts 
are illuminated by the light emanating from Radhika's toenails. <laughs> Whether in dreams, wakefulness, Ananta Gauti Vishnu Ananta Gauti Explain those so, the tone is most beautiful object of meditation because whenever we think that all the love, the feelings of Swamini are coming through her tone is, and the Gurudev loves this very beautiful verse in the Radha Kripakataksham Ananti Goti Vishnu Loka, like the entire millions of universes are yearning for receiving that light which is coming out of the tones. They are all the goddesses, they are all yearning for this. But the Kinkari is so fortunate that she can directly serve her lotus feet. The Kinkari is so fortunate that she can directly put foot luck, she can paint the feet, she can play with the feet of Swamini. Not even Mohan can sometimes play with the feet, but the Kinkari can always. So how fortunate, how blessed we actually are. I'm just always thinking when we're here in this room that this deep, deep taste for our Kinkari Bhav is being here so beautifully shared 24-7 <laughs> actually. I, I, I have no experience of what 24-7 means. I can do 24 divided through 7, which is like three hours a day, which is two hours eating prasadam, one hour day. so that's what I know. But, but I see all the all, all of us to do this mercy are more and more entering in this 24 7. And good, sorry, I, I just thought one thing before I wanted to share, but uh, I was very shy, but I thought the Guru was telling about the difficulties which come, the difficulties which come sometimes you know, in our life. Then I thought that actually, in order to understand Parakya Bhav, we have to go sometimes through difficulties. Sometimes Jatila Kutila have to be in our house, you know. In other words, how to increase the taste, the greed, the yearning, you know, if everything is running too perfectly, too smooth, then we get satiated. And satiated means downfall of the Bhajan stars. So Parakya Bhav is sometimes good to go through some things, you know. But with that consciousness, actually, oh, this obstacle is here to help me to increase my, my greed. And uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit uh, deviated. I'm sorry from the, from the topic. But I just felt like this was also for me. It's beautiful realization that uh, yes, difficulty come in my life. If they can help me to go deeper, then I'm very happy. <laughs> then it's, then it's a, but if I'm struggling, then means my ego is struggling. No guru that shows all this 24/7. How many challenges, difficulties he has to face to us mostly. <laughs> but. I just only see good that it's going deeper. <laughs> so we have to embrace the difficulties sometimes in order to increase our food. And now coming back to the tone is for the so they say that her tone is for the from there all the feelings also come and that's why we also do charan seva. When we massage our Guru Dev, those who have done, I have heard 
they feel so charged, so, feel, so much energy comes through that. So imagine how much power and energy comes if you just meditate on, on her on her feet. I think this is um, in all the scriptures, it's all the mentioned that the feet are so essential. The saints, the feet of other women, and also Kavikanapurna is always sucking Mahatma's stone, as you know, and receiving all the Jews. And so, so, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not keeping on the style track of uh, what was shared, but uh, I just uh, followed the Guru just to say something. I'm very sorry for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They are extraordinary kinkaris that never come down from the asana of a kinkari. La Lalita Asana of the Kinkari. They're not good. Want to go down for the moment. They want to be too close to They want to be always in that. Ask the moment to stay. Lalita, Vishaka, and others occasionally act as heroines, but the Kinkari's hearts are illuminated by the light emanating from Radhika's toenails, whether in dreams, wakefulness, or deep sleep. Right, yeah. Dreams. 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 Or deep. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. This is beyond good. <laughs> Yesterday we read one verse about the toenails, how to serve the manjaris with the black hair and with the water of the Yamuna, those toenails. It was so beautiful verse, I can not reply this now, but it was described how the manjaris do this seva, and today again we come to this point of the toenails of our Swami. It's so beautiful that they are so shining and all her love is shining out of her toenails. And it is so our seva, so beautiful to do the seva. To serve them with the water and to dry with the hair. It's also a beautiful picture we can meditate on how we do this by our own hand as Manjari or Kinkari. The true vision of their experiences are recorded within the Goswami's books. Vrindavanas, Rasa Sadhakas are blessed by relishing all these sweet flavors <coughs> in their <coughs> in their books 
In the previous verse, Sri Pada wept in his sadaka vesh, calling for his heart's beloved Shiradharani. In each address, there is a sweet relish of Leela Mai's sweet pastimes. He prays Swam Rupam Avishkuru. Reveal your real form, which is filled with sweet pastimes to me. Take me along to the kingdom of Leela. Then he sees his Spurti Devata, Godhead of his visions, again appearing before his eyes. It is Uttara Goshta. You know what is the meaning of Spurti? Sorry, my audio. Yes. It is Uttara Goshta. Krishna no. returns. Radhe, uh, Guru, they wants to to say something. The meaning of the Samai. spoon is a Hindi word, right? Can you, anyone explain about that? The spoon is a flash. Flash of flash. Flash of flash. Vision of it comes quickly and it's gone. Yeah. Man meditates something. When you make a photo in nighttime and you have a you have this flashlight. flashlight. And you make the, it's dark, and you make the flashlight, and short light comes, and then it's dark again. Yeah, that is And it is dark, more and more coming, if you are more and more connected. Every portion, you will get this foot. This is the beauty of this foot. It's coming, you believe it. You can increase it, or you can decrease it. Your spiritual life is in progress, it will come. Anything you meditate, it will support you. Sri Hand, that one, very important. Guru, but, I have one question regarding this, yeah. what you said. What? Then? When we speak about Spurtis, does it mean the Spurtis are always in the form of visions of, of in the form of pictures because Raghunath uh, Prabhupada Saraswati he like in blitz in flesh he sees Radhika are the sportists are always in the form of this kind of pictures or the sportists are different kinds of It depends upon the stage of my 
through the ears, but real relishing is also sporty. I just want to. Yes. When it appears, it's not my... my yes. 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 Happening. Mm. Another question, Gurudev, is connected with this. How, will, how I will know that this kind of flesh of some conclusion is proper? It's not my flesh of my imagination concoction like it. Okay. Mercy of my Guru. He's Mercy asking, of my asking how to differentiate Gurudev, if it's a mind thing or mercy. Mercy. It's all mercy. She's not mind subject. Jai Ho, Gurudev. If the mind subject is there, is also coming through the mind to me. Yeah. If the word subject is there, this mercy is coming through the word. And if the picture was the mercy is there, it also flies from It's all mercy. Nitya Siddha, Sadhana Siddha, the one is who live in the Kripa, they also get the this is the Kripa Sadhya, nothing sadhya, also for the leader. Sometimes we forget <laughs> that all this is coming by mercy. Yeah. We have, when we take birth in this world, we come with nothing, right? And all this information about the spirituality, the names, the forms, explanations, all mercy by the Guru. So this pictures are coming only by this mercy. Otherwise, we have no idea of 
all this we now speak about. We didn't know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without the Guru. So, automatically, if there is a picture coming inside, where it is coming from, automatically it has to come from this information and blessings by the Guru, because he is teaching this name, form, smell, all this. So it's only possible by his mercy and also mercy of more details I explain. I know Mahaprabhu from 10 years, 20 years. But the moment I realize that Mahaprabhu will be in grass, that is the mercy. That is my real understanding. That's the mercy. Mahaprabhu, who is Mahaprabhu? What is happening in my life? That is mercy. What is come to help us? And how to we give understanding to understand that? <laughs> that is mercy. <laughs> What Swaro Tamoda said, huh? Yeah. That is possible. I read in my time. Like a Vila Kusuman, it is a book. One subject, and everything is one pointed. But when I read many times, and I'm reading from 80, every time I see the new, I have nothing that I know this. For me, it is surprising every moment. This must be. Yes, Gurudev, in the spiritual life, a repetition is bliss. In the material life, repetition is boring. I was surprised. So, when you talk about philosophy and the grief, you will become bored. <laughs> Because you listen, but you not understand. Here you see, listening every day, but no becoming bored. New things coming in the heart. Surprising, really. <laughs> Behind that meaning coming, that is realization. But I never know that. You can't be that. Excuse me, Guru Dev. Huh? I joined for yeah. Marathi Maratha. Puja. Yeah. Mama, she saw the picture of Mama. How she was come here. Mama was here. And I saw this camera. I can you so turn this? Turn. This too, Mama, come here. <laughs> <laughs> they are. One is from Germany, Ma Yoga Sakti, and Ma from Ma Santa Domingo. She habla español, and he habla French, German, English. And they are all. Pujari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One is Samadhi Pujari, one is And both are with love, they wake up at both and they start with one. Example from it. Yeah. 
I will never forget both of them. It's all right. We didn't start yet. <coughs> They are here by in my life that all sits so they be not sitting oh. yes, by your realization. Please share that. Please share so they do. Your conclusion we want to. <laughs> So, no, which is coming uh, last. I'm here again in Mandat, and I haven't been here for two years. And it is, it is coming home. They are so lovingly, everyone hugged me, and I was so welcome. And I'm melting. So now I'm allowed to be here listening all this, this rich sharings, this rich feelings, this direct connections I can feel. And I'm allowed to be a bit this Gopinata and Gopika. So much love is there. So much love is there. And Guravani is singing, but he's in India. <laughs> and I, I was allowed to go with a meeting. And it was such a relaxed journey. So far away and so, so nearby. Mm -hmm. And Guranga, he's mm -hmm. sharing so sweetly and so intense. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing all the greetings from Kunalata and from Sukhati and Prasashvati. I'm here with them, mm -hmm. feeling they are also here. Mm -hmm. Karuna Priya. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. It's a, a mercy, a blessing for me. Thank you so much. I have a question from Goranga. Yes, Guru there. Guru, I am happy with this. Slowly, slowly, all we can grow like this. I will be more happy when this will happen. That all devotees can grow like this. They will be so lucky and so light will change of them. That they will understand the meaning of the life and taking birth. Right. Do you agree with yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, my dear. That is our last of the when we are ready to serve like this and want to increase that other like this service and so much. Rather, 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 Gurudev.
We love you. Radhe, radhe. See you tomorrow. Zoom you tomorrow. Thank you. 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 Thank you.